People need to understand that all of North America is indigenous land, it is native land. People tend to forget that there was a vibrant native culture um, living in all parts of North America. And food is really the piece that's going to help us move forward into a brighter future. My name is Sean Sherman and I am a chef. I own the company The Sioux Chef. So this is gonna be two pieces per plate for these. Our mission is revitalizing Native American foods and re-identifying North American cuisine. We've tried really hard to maintain authenticity by removing all of the colonial ingredients like dairy, wheat flour, processed sugar, beef, pork, chicken, and we're just using a lot of wild game, a lot of the native agricultural heirloom varietals, a lot of the wild foods around us, and really making those plates that taste like a region. Most of these ingredients are very familiar to people, but the usage of a lot of the wild plants really talk about a place in a community. We prioritize purchasing from the indigenous vendors first because we really want to open up a lot of opportunity for indigenous people growing out farms or collecting things from the wild or raising animals. So for the big dinner, we're actually uh, cooking this bison down with a bunch of fresh cedar and some bergamot. We will purchase from anybody raising these indigenous pieces because it is such an important part of the landscape and the history. You know you want it. As we travel around the country, we like to make dinners and foods that really represent those areas. What's great about being able to do these dinners, especially in non-indigenous communities, is just to bring awareness. This kind of food that we're eating today, like you're gonna feel really good when you leave here. You're not gonna feel heavy and weighted down. You're gonna feel energized and just happy because you're knowing where this food is coming from. We feel like Anybody across North America will benefit from the understanding of the indigenous food systems around you and it's all going to help us move forward. White corn is one of our relatives. We feel that she is alive and she wants to do the job that she told our creator she would do, is to feed our people, to nourish them. The work that we do, if we didn't have this, we, we would lose everything. For a few thousand years, uh, Potawatomi people have been incredible farmers and have grown lots and lots of varieties of crops. The seed library is a place where we take crops which are disappearing, um, rare and endangered Potawatomi vegetables, and we grow them out and we restore them and put them back in the hands of native farmers. George Martin carries the Potawatomi tradition of making damnabu or corn soup. In our seed library, we have 76 unique varieties of corn. Each one has its own cultural identity, its own unique flavor. After a while, when we stir it, you'll see how tough it gets to stir it. Our corn is a lot different than other corns which are out there. If we didn't have the seed library, these traditional foods might be gone forever. Within our seed library, 80% of the varieties which we take care of are rare or nearly extinct. Some of the varieties we care for here, we're the only place in the world which has them. This one's gonna be a nice one. Four years ago, when we first got the Nugasig Nug, our white flower corn, we only had a half a canning jar, a very small amount of seed. We've grown it every year since, and now we have enough that we may have 100 bushels full. 
Um, that's enough that next year we could plant six or seven acres of just this corn. That's a huge increase. It is important that we take, that's what we were sent down here for, to take care of Mother Earth and all her creations here. And that corn realizes that we're back using it again, and that we're gonna use it in a feast. It makes the corn feel good that they're being used by our people again. It's done and it's ready to eat. The market for cultural art is huge. Unfortunately, almost all the Native art that you find either online or in stores features fake Native American art. When I walk into a store and I see cultural art from my community that's counterfeit, it feels like a family photo on a product in a store. It feels that personal to me, and I wanted to do something about it. My name is Louis Gong, I'm a Nooksack tribal member, and I'm the founder of 8th Generation, which is based at Pike Place Market in Seattle. When I walk through the mall, almost every store has native art on products in it, and not one of those products is connected to a native artist. To me, that represents a huge problem, and 8th Generation tries to address that problem by creating actual opportunities for cultural artists to develop products. I'm a self-taught artist, and about 10 years ago, I started doing art by customizing a pair of shoes. And I had developed a really strong organic following from doing that work. We know that people want to buy native art, so that eventually became the foundation of 8th Generation. We have about 15 different business relationships with makers within two miles of Pike Place Market. When you buy products featuring art done by Native people and produced by Native-owned companies, you're strengthening the cultural art and the communities whose artwork you like. We're the first Native-owned company to offer wool blankets. This is important because the aesthetic of wool blankets has largely been Native. When people think of wool blankets, they think of Native art. I think people are used to seeing Native people in one of three categories. You know, we're typically a charity project or a symbol of history or a symbol of the natural environment. We're planting a seed about who Native people really are. And so when they walk in the door, the message that gets conveyed is that we're alive and we're thriving. And that contradicts what people want to think about Native people. Eagle feathers give us that strength and courage to go on. They've been in our ceremonies for centuries. And to be able to have these feathers in our time of prayer, in our time of need, is really important to us. We're at the National Eagle Repository. Last year we received right at 2,700 eagles that were found dead or died for one reason or another. And we provide loose feathers from eagles to Native Americans for their religious and cultural purposes. They are protected by various laws such as the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. So people can't just go picking them up. But this, this way it allows Native Americans a lawful way to obtain and possess eagles. The birds that we get have died from uh, various causes. They often collide with something. It causes them to break a wing and, of course, results in death. But usually those injuries are pretty minor to the feathers, so we, we could still use most of the feathers. So we're checking what needs to be replaced there or, or what feathers need to be added in in an effort to try to give them the equivalent of one whole bird. The role of the National Repository is very important. It helps us to keep going with our lives that we know it.
from the beginning of time, from creation, Quinault people occupied this area. That's how deeply rooted our connection is to the village. It's very sacred. And we will be moving. My name is Fawn Sharp. I'm president and CEO of the Quinault Indian Nation. Quinault's an Indian tribe located in western Washington. We're surrounded by water. A good part of our citizenry and population fishes. If not commercially, we fish for subsistence. So the problem is our village is vulnerable to flooding and extreme weather events due to climate change to the point where I've had to declare two states of emergency in the last two years. And our entire village could sink into the sand and disappear. Uh, it's very hard to, to reconcile those two things, to know that this is a very sacred resource, but it's also a resource that could wipe out our entire village. The permanent fix ultimately is going to be removing the entire community to a higher ground. We'll be moving about a thousand people and the cost for that move is going to be about 65 million dollars. And we hope to have a good part of this done within the next 10 years. Today if you were to drive in the upper village all you would see is an access road. It's still very um, wilderness-like, trees, grass. I see a place where it's very safe. It's built on rock. It's not vulnerable to either sinking or being taken out by a tsunami. It seems like our younger generation is really embracing the concept. They're gonna be the, the ones that will be occupying and, and residing in the upper village.